Uh, uh, hey, hey, Bob. Yeah. On the first day of Sukkot, there were 13 bullocks, two rams, and one he goat. There remained 14 yearling sheep for eight watches. On the first day, six of the watches offered up two each, and the rest offered one each. On the second day, five offered up two each, and the rest one each. The third day, four offered up two each, and the rest one each. On the fourth day, they offered three offered up two each, and the rest one each. On the fifth day, two offered up two each, and the rest one each. On the sixth day, one offered up two, and the rest one each. And on the seventh day, all were equal. On the eighth day, they reverted to casting lots as on the other festivals. And the Chachamim said, whoever offered a bullocks today should not offer them tomorrow, but they took turns in rotation. During three periods of the year, all 24 watches were equal to the prescribed offerings of the festival and in the division of the Panam bread. On Shavuot, they would say to him, here is your matzah for you, and here is chametz for you. The watch whose time of service was fixed only was fixed only in offers the daily burnt offerings, vow offerings, free will offerings, the remaining public offerings, and this watch offers everything. If a festival fell near the Shabbos, either before or it or after it, all the watches shared equally in the division of the Panam bread. If one day intervened between them, the watch whose time was fixed took 10 loaves, and the one that stayed behind took two. But during the rest of the year, the incoming watch took six, and the outgoing watch took six. But Yehuda says the incoming watch took seven and the outgoing watch five. The incoming watch divided the bread in the north and the outgoing watch in the south. The watch of Bilga always divided the bread in the south. Its ring was permanently affixed and its window was sealed. How do you know that? Okay. Okay. Um, right. Um, yep. so it's a curious name for the Masechta because it's really just dealing with the laws of Yom Tov. Um, but it, because the, the first Mishnah opens up with the, with the word Beitza, I, I, guess, I, I guess it's easier to say Beitza than Yom or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> I, my, I told you, my Caruso, when we first started this, this, was the first, no, this wasn't the first mission, it was the second one we did. The first Gemara we did was Makos. But anyway, here we said it's Beya. Beya is a better word to use than Beitza. So. Okay. Um, I only work. I only work. I just follow what he tells me. I've never got that. <laughs> I've, never, I've never understood that. Why? Um... Oh, an egg that was laid on Yantar. Okay. Shammai says. Stop, it's stop, 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 stop. Oh, wait, we got to do that. We have to finish. This is my job. This is my job over here. Oh, come on. <laughs> and we're finished with sukkah anyway. So, no, we didn't finish sukkah, did we? We it's, still had to do Gimel Yud. We have to do Chazaras on, on sukkah as well after this. After this. Okay. All right. Uh, so the question that we start off with, of course, is the is an egg that was laid on Yom Tov. Uh, now, why is there a machlokus about this? We're going to see. Um, really, the Chazal were in agreement about the fact that an egg is formed inside the bird um, the day before it's laid, which means it's already it's already uh, it's already been created. It's not it's not called nolad. In, and it's just sitting as if it's uh, inside a container. Right? You've got a, an egg inside a warm container over there, and it pops out on the Yom Tov. So had it been formed on the Yom Tov, that would have been called Nolad, we would have called it Mokta. Yeah, there's a category of Mokta called Mokta Machmas Nolad, um, because, it's something, because it's something new. OK, but uh, the, the problem that we have with it is that what happens if Yom Tov falls on a Sunday? Because then, if Yom Tov fell on the Sunday, then the egg was formed on Shabbos, so it would still be, so it's, it would actually be Mokta over there. And um, and this is the basis for the Makokis that we have in this Mishnah. Beis Shammai Yomrim Te'achel. Eske Zun Tahayat, we don't care. About, uh, on a, uh, everyone agrees, by the way, about the about if Yom Tov fell on a Sunday, that it would be Mokta. We're talking here about where Yom Tov fell any other day. We also have the problem that if someone's on his way to Shul, and it's 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 not you know um, what do you call it? Uh, I can't think of the word. Uh, it, it, Yom Tov had uh, Shabbos hasn't started yet, and on his way back, I'm sure now, well, the, the, the egg is sitting there, so that's just that's the problem also. Well, if you, um, why? Well, because then then the, the egg would have been would have been formed on Shabbos possibly. Well, this is Be- the, 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 we got we got to be clear that this is Yom Tov, not Shabbos, and Shabbos is never Flokis. Mm-hmm. Uh, because, because on Shabbos, 
yeah, look, it, it's, it's something that was, that was part of the chicken's body, right? On Yom Tov, right. you have the option of shafting the chicken and you can eat it. So if you have a chicken here that's, that's designated for eating or designated for laying eggs or whatever, whatever it's, the, it's there for, um, it's, it's designated and, and, you're, and the, whole, the whole body of the chicken is, uh, is gufa, is de designated as food. So, you know, there's food before, food after, whatever. This, this, is, not a, this is not an issue. It's just, yeah. <laughs> so I saw that. <laughs> you saw them jumping up? Sorry. Yes. Uh, he's, he's not doing it now. Okay. Okay. Um, you know, the problem also comes, can we, if they go to, if Yontav came out, no, I'm going to mix up. If Yontav came out the next day after Shabbos. Yes. And he goes to check that animal. Can, 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 can he eat that egg? Well, okay, so this is, this is exactly what we're talking about. Right. Exactly what we're talking about over here. And <laughs> that is one smart cat. <laughs> um, so, um, right, sorry, last night, last night, Shana Thorpe Day. Um, the, this is exactly what we're talking about is, uh, are, you, are you allowed to eat the egg? So if, if, it's, if it's laid on the yomtiv, so let's say it's laid on a Tuesday. Yom Tov fell on a Tuesday, and uh, and Beisham, I look at this and say, okay, well, it, the egg was formed on Monday, which is chol, and that's fine. So you don't have to, you, it, it's fine, you can eat that, eat that egg, no problem. Beis Hillel are concerned. They say, no, don't eat it. Why? Because if you get used to eating eggs that were laid on Yom Tov, you're also going to eat the egg that was laid on a Sunday, on a, on, a, on a Sunday Yom Tov. Okay? And we don't want that. Um, because, well, actually, it's, it's an interesting question why Beis Hillel are so much on it, because Taklas, we're just talking about a Mukta, um, and Mukta is a Dirabon, and so why is, so why is Beis Hillel uh, Beis on this? Um, Interesting. I, I, I'm, I'm not sure. It's a, it's a, it seems to be like a gazera on a gazera, but they so they make a gazera on any yomtov because of a yomtov that falls uh, that falls on a Sunday. Okay, so this is one of the one of the documented cases where Beis Hillel is uh, more machner than Beis Shammai. Okay, then we move on to another another case. Um, Beis Shammai omrim seor because I saw chametz bekach koservis. So the shear in order to be over on uh, chametz bepesach. Okay. So seor is um, is uh, leavening sourdough, right? Okay, you say sourdough the the shear and and we're talking about not the shear for eating. Everyone agrees that uh, that the shear for eating is a kazayas because that's just eating. Okay. Here we're talking about the iser of balyerai balyamatze. Right. Okay. Okay. So the base shama say that for for sourdough it's a it's a kazayas, but chametz is a kasevis. Huh? And the kasevis is um, is like a like a, like a little date, which is larger than the kazais and smaller than a kabeitza. Excuse me, a sec. <coughs> um, uh, okay. Um, so th so they so so that's also slightly more makil that you've got a slightly bigger shear in order to be over on balyar and in terms in terms of chametz. Um, Beis Hillel omrim zeva zeva kazais. It's uh, no, no distinctions made. It's kazais whether it's for eating, whether it's for balyarai, balimatse, ben, for, whether it's for uh, for sourdough or for for, for um, The uh, what's the what's the lambdas of Beis Shammai? Why do they make a distinction that that it's a for service? Um, And I'm just trying to see what the um, doesn't give he he doesn't give the 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 lumbus of uh, of why Beis Shammai say it's uh, oh there we go oh there we go so so in Beis Shammai Jehovah the castle the Indian be or gam se or gam chamei tare ze ba lashmi enu she en shir or shel zeka shir or chaze I've got some lumbus uh, the fact the, the two are mentioned separately um, that they don't have the same. Shir. Yeah, um, the, and even though the pasuk said that the same as far as eating is concerned, it doesn't it doesn't equate them as far as as getting rid of them is concerned. 
Okay, that's uh, it. Does, it doesn't say why they put, they chose that particular Shia. Anyway, those are two. Uh, those are two cases of uh, of a kumra of Beis Hillel and a kula of Beis Shana. Mishnah Beis Hashochet Chaya Ve'Of Biyomtov. He has another case where Beis Shama is Mekel. Okay, is in the is let's say it comes Yomtov and you decide that you want to shecht a bird or a, um, a chaya. Now, what's in common between the two of them is kisoy adam. Right. Okay, now you need to do kisoy adam, but um, kisoy adam is generally done with sand or, or something like that. That's typically mukta, mm -hmm. which means that you have to, that you have to have designated something before Yom Tov in order to be able to use it. Okay, now what happens comes, comes Yom Tov and he hasn't got anything designated. So, Beis Shammai say, uh, So let's say if he's got a if he's got a shovel that's already stuck in the ground, then what he can do is he can just lift the shovel up, and it'll and it'll pull up whatever dirt comes with it, and he can use that dirt to to cover the uh, to cover the blood. So Lachachila says Beis Shammai he's allowed to he's allowed to shift depending on the fact that he's going to pull, pull up the spade and uh, and find uh, and find some dust there, and he can and he can use that to to cover it. No, if you don't have if you don't have uh, sand ready to to cover the blood, then you're not allowed to do a shketa. Unless you've got your, your sand already prepared. But they do concede that if he went ahead and did shecht without permission, then he should do what Beis Shammai said: lift up the spade and, and get some uh, uh, get some, some sand out of there. Uh, it, it, the Mishnah says, She'afar kira muchan hu. Right, it, 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 interesting. It might be ve'afar kira muchan hu. That um, the afer, the, and they also agree that the um, that the ash in an oven is uh, is considered muchan. You be, you're allowed to cook on, on the yontav, so whatever ash is made out of the fuel in your in your oven, is not mokta, and that could be used for kisoy adam as well, um, as long as it retains a certain modicum of heat, that it could be, still be useful for for cooking. Um, is is one of the that's just a little proviso over there because as soon as it cools down and is no longer useful, then it becomes mokta as well. Mishnah Gemul. Beis Shammai Omrim Ein Molichin Is Asulam Mishovach Leshovach. So you've got a dove coat. Right, you've got a, like an enclosure with a whole bunch of doves inside there, and uh, and he wants to go inside and take a and take a couple of birds and shift them and have them for lunch. Okay, now he's got a special ladder inside there that he, that, that is designed for moving around in the dove coat. It's not a typical industrial ladder or whatever, but nonetheless, Beis Shammai say en mo lechin is a sulam ishovach l'shovach. You're not allowed to move the the ladder uh, from from coat to coat. Why? Um, but inside the same dovecote, he can move it around from window to window. That's okay. The concern of Beis Shama is that he's going to carry it out, and people are going to look and say, "Ooh, he's carrying his his ladder around. He's probably going to go and uh, and fix his roof." And it's a Mary sign that it doesn't look good. Okay, Beis Hillel Matirin. I say, forget it. It's a it's a special ladder. You can see that it's a that it's a dovecote ladder, and people and if people jump to the wrong conclusion. That's their problem. Okay. So Beis Shammai also say that, uh, that, that in order to designate the, the birds in the coat as, as edible on Yom Tov, he has to have gone and, and like actually done a little pick them up or move them or something to designate before, before Yom Tov came in that these are the birds that he's planning to shift on Yom Tov. Okay, and um, the concern Actually, the uh, he doesn't have to move them, he doesn't have to climb up and actually physically move them. He can just say, Those are the ones that I'm going to shaft on Yamta. The concern that, um, that, the, that the Gemara explains is that, uh, is that he, um, if it's the we're talking specifically here about the original pair of birds that he used to breed the, the dove coat. Um, because uh, because you know those are the birds he started with. He feels a certain uh, attachment to them. So now uh, 
so there's the concern that he's going to um so what's the concern that he's going to pick them up for, for nothing um uh, let's just see how, the, how does he put it uh so he'll pick he'll pick he'll pick them up and think oh, I, I just can't i can't check these these birds they're my favorite birds and uh and um and uh, and then it turns out that he's that he's picked them up for for no for no good reason. Okay, and for and suddenly this time, um, Beshama is the one that's uh, that's that, that's been go there, and maybe he's going to come to be over and mock her. Okay, interesting. Um, okay, and that's uh, and and Beshama and Beshila is not uh, not concerned about this. Okay. The next next mission and later on it's going to talk about what happens when the birds move. Yeah, that's uh, okay, that gets more interesting. Then we start. Yes. And then, uh, you know, of course, of course, this doesn't hold the candle to Kenim. <laughs> okay, back to Sukkah. Back to Sukkah. We have uh, Gimel Yud. In a non-Jewish slave, if a non-Jewish slave, a woman or a minor, recited Hallel for someone, he must repeat after them whatever they say, and let it be a curse upon him. If an adult was reciting for him, he must respond after him, hallelujah. In a place where they are accustomed to repeat, he repeats. Where the custom is to recite as is, he recites as is. Where the custom is to recite a blessing after it, he recites a blessing after it. And everything must be done in accord with the local custom. If one purchases a lula from his friend during Shemitah, he must give him the esrog as a gift because it is forbidden to purchase it during Shemitah. Originally, the lula was taken in the temple seven days, and in the provinces, it was taken one day. After the temple was destroyed, Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai instituted that lula be taken in the provinces seven days in remembrance of the temple, and that the entire day of waving is forbidden. <clears throat> okay. Masechas okay. Yoma. Seven days before Yom Kippur, they could sequester the Kohen Gadol from his house to the official's chamber, and they prepare another Kohen to serve as a substitute, lest he become disqualified. But Yehuda says they also prepare another wife for him, lest his wife die, for it is said, and he shall make atonement for himself and for his house, and his wife, that is his wife, that, that his house, that is his wife. They said to him, if so, there is no end to the matter. On all of these seven days, he throws the blood, burns the incense, prepares the lambs, and offers the head and the hind leg. On all the other days of the year, if he wishes to offer any sacrifice, he may offer it. For the Kohen, for the Kohen Gadol has the first right to offer and the first right to make the portion. They provide him a uh, Chachamim from among the Chachamim of the court who read to him about the service of the Kodei. They say to him, my Lord Kohen Gadol, read with your own mouth. Perhaps you have forgotten or perhaps you have not learned. On the morning of the of the eve of Yom Kippur, they stand him at the eastern gate and lead him before his oxen, rams, and sheep, that he should recognize them and be conversant in the service. Okay. The only reason I bought a tissue so I have them for the for the mission. Okay, that's good. Okay, Shabbos. Yeah. Shabbos, Yud Chet Aleph. We may clear away even four or five baskets of straw or a produce to make room for guests or to avoid a contournment of study, but not a storehouse. We may clear away truma, that is Tahor, Demai, Tahor, uh, Demai, the first tithe whose truma has been separated from it, second tithe and consecrated property that have been redeemed, and dry lupin because, of, because it is food for the poor. But we may not clear away untithe produce, nor first tithe, whose truma has not been separated from it, nor second tithe, nor consecrated property that has not been redeemed. Nor kolakas, kolakas, kolakasi, kasa, I don't know why I'm having trouble with that. Kolakasia, nor mustard. Reb Shimon ben Gamil permits kolakia, and since it is a food for ravens. Okay. Bundles of straw, twi bundles of twigs and bundles of green branches. If we prepare them for animal feed, we may handle them, and if not, we may not handle them. We may invert a basket in front of the chicks so that they may use it to climb upon up and down. A hen that has run away, we may push her until she enters. 
We may make calves and who and foals walk in the public domain. A woman make her child may make a child walk. Said Rabbi Huda, when at the time he raises one foot and puts down the other, but if he drags his feet, it's prohibited. We may not assist an animal in delivering its young on Yom Tov, but we may support it. We may assist a woman in childbirth on the on the Sabbath, but we may call a midwife from place to place for her. We may desecrate Shabbos on her behalf, and we may tie the umbilical cord. Who uh, Yossi says we may even cut it. All requirements of circumcision may be performed on Shabbos. Okay. Okay, brachas. Yes. If one died but forgot to recite the grace, Beit Shammai said he must return to his place. Oh, that's wrong. I said if one died, he's not going to return to his place. If one died but forgot to recite the grace, Beit Shammai says he must return to his place. I, I, had, to die. <laughs> I, had, I had to die because, that, because my brain could only make sense of it that way. I know. <laughs> When Beis Hillel said he may recite the grace after meals where he went where he remembered, till when may he say grace till the food is digested in his stomach. If a cup of water is served, a cup of wine is served after the meal, and there is no other cup after this, Beis Shammai says he recites the blessing over the wine and afterwards over the food. Beis Hillel, Beis Hillel says he recites the blessing over the food and afterwards over the wine. One responds with Amen to the blessing of an Israelite but does not respond with our main after the blessing of a chusin unless one has heard the entire blessing. And one who sees the sight where miracles were brought for Israel says, blessed to perform miracles for our fathers in this place, a place from where idolatry was eradicated. Blessed is you, uproot idolatry from our land. Midos. Aleph Chet. Mm -hmm. A hall, the hall of a fire was a dome, and it was a large house encircled with ledges of stone, and the elders of the base Av would sleep there, and the keys of the courtyard were in their hands. And the young Kohanan would sleep each with his pillow on the ground. And there was a hollow place there that measured one amma by one amma, and a marble tile with a ring was affixed in it, and a chain upon which the king's keys were hung. When the time to look, lock the gates arrived, the Kohen would lift up the tile with the ring and remove the keys from the chain. And then the Kohen would lock the gates from the inside while the Levi was sleeping outside. When the Kohen finished locking the gates, he would return the keys to the chain and the tile to its place. And he would then place his covering upon the tile and go to sleep. If one of the Kohanim experienced a seminal admission, he would exit the hall of fire, proceed to the tunnel that went under the uh, Bira, and there were lamps burning there and there until he reached the emerging room. Rabbi Eliezer ben Yaakov says he would leave through a second tunnel that went under the Kale and would exit the Temple Mount and go on his way uh, via Tani. The Temple Mount was 500 Amos by 500 Amos and the majority of the space was in the south. The largest area was in the east and the, large, uh, the third largest area was in the north. The minority of the space was in the west. The area that had the greatest size also saw the most use. Okay. And Baba Masia. You heard that? What? The cat? No. Screamed at the other cat? No, no, no. <laughs> Crazy. All craftsmen are regarded as paid shomer, and any of them who says, take your article and bring money as an unpaid shomer. If one says, watch for me, and I will watch for you, he is a paid shomer. If one says, watch for me, and he replies, put it down before me, he is an unpaid shomer. If he, lent him on, if he lent him on security, he is a paid shomer. Rabbi Yehuda says if he lent him money, he is an unpaid shomer. If he lent him, lent him produce, he is a paid shomer. And Abishal says a person who may, may rent out a poor man's security, fixing a price and progressively diminishing the debt because he is, he is as one who returns a lost article. If one moves a cast from one place to another and breaks it, whether he is an unpaid shomer or a paid shomer, he must swear. Reb Eliezer says, indeed, both must swear, but I wonder whether both can swear. Okay, because it, yes. it, it, that means that it, yeah. forcing both of them to swear would mean that one of them is definitely lying. Oh. And, and one of them is definitely taking a, a, a vain oath. If one hired labor- we're, we're done, we're done. Those three? Yeah, that's three. Okay. All right. Okay. Terrific. Okay. Have a great day. You too.